Paneratopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by IVPN. Use a VPN to help prevent your online activity from becoming a permanent record. IVPN encrypts your data and DNS requests so your ISP or mobile network provider cannot monitor or log your online activity. Purchase an IVPN service today anonymously with Monero. All right. Sorry. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> it was a different screen that didn't have all the links. <laughs> For some reason, we can't make this part smooth on the show. I apologize. Uh, all right. So the news. There's... There, we could do like a whole. There could be a whole separate podcast just on what's going on in terms of CBDCs and all that jazz around the world. I mean, it's just ramping up week to week. It's getting insane. First story: Euro- European Parliament votes to form final law on EU digital wallet. Introduced in 2021, the European Digital Identity Framework aims to enable and protect the digital identity of EU citizens. So this isn't a CBDC story. This is a digital wallet story, digital IDs. European lawmakers are moving forward with the introduction of a European Union-wide digital wallet by passing a uh, plenary vote on moving to the initiative to inter inter interinstitutional negotiations. The European Parliament on March 15 voted in favor of negotiating a mandate for talks with the EU member states on revisions of the new European Union digital identity framework. So they're looking to uh, basically move towards creating these digital IDs that will be issued by the EU. This is all part of the paradigm that people are, are concerned about, right? A, a world where everybody's using CBDCs in combination with state-issued digital IDs and all the potential dystopia that can stem from that. Uh, it's happening. It's moving forward. Digital IDs are on the horizon. As um, uh, this is an interesting part. As previously reported, it, the ITRE included the standard of zero knowledge proofs in its IEID amendments, intending to allow EU citizens to fully control their identity data. Uh, so I don't know. I guess this is developing. We'll see what the European Union's digital ID end up looking like. But uh, I think we're all kind of concerned about the, you know, worst case potential for it. Next story, Federal Reserve confirms July launch of FedNow. So uh, another step in the direction of control by the state. Yes, Sunita. Okay. (laughs) Sorry about that. Apparently I can't tell what to do. Shouldn't it just share the tabs yeah, as I move over? Happen. No, yes, yeah, okay. Federal Reserve confirms July launch for FedNow Instant Payment Service. The FedNow service aims to reduce the gap in a payment time between United States and Finance. So uh, this kind of came out of nowhere. I certainly didn't have my eye on this. The fact that there was going to be a FedNow Instant Payment Service that was, that, that, that was going to be launched, and it's, it's only months away. Everybody has been talking about the development of CBDCs. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, they've been developing and are about to launch a FedNow instant payment service. The United States Federal Reserve has confirmed a July launch date for its long-awaited instant payment system, seen by some as an alternative to central bank digital currencies and stable coins. The instant payment network will settle payments in seconds. It can support some tra- transactions between consumers, merchants, and banks. It does not rely on blockchain technology. So this, this isn't a CBDC in, in, in any way. It's a significant step for the government and it is controlled by the Federal Reserve. Clearinghouse RTP network, which also offers real-time payments, is operated by a cons- consortium of large banks. According to the March 15th, the U.S. Fed said that the debut of the Fed now is set for July with the U.S. Treasury and a diverse mix of financial institutions of all sizes ready to use the network from launch. Um, Nick Carter chimed in. If you like bank runs in the age of social media, you're going to love bank runs in the age of Fed now. So with Fed now being in place, uh, there's a concern that people will be able to uh, uh, directly essentially or uh, pu- pull pull their money out of the system. Fed now was announced in 2019 and will provide around the clock real time gross settlement for funding commercial bank money from a sender through a Fed credit account to its rep- to its recipient. It also has built in features such as fraud risk management. Following the official launch, the Federal Reserve outlined that it will push to onboard as many as 
as many as financial institutions as possible in order, in order to increase the available of instant payments. Um, I don't know, guys. I don't really know much about this. It's interesting to see how quickly it's developing, how fast, but the Fed is basically implementing a system that's going to allow them to you know, issue money to di directly to the banks and institutions that will be participating in the system uh, in a direct and instant manner. Um, and we will see what it leads to. Uh, it's not to be confused with the CBDC, but I guess the concern is that maybe this can be what the feds hope the CBDC would be. Uh, you're, you know, we're seeing pushback against the, the concept of CBDCs. Um, we're hearing voices in Congress that are opposed to a CBDC that would be launched by the Fed. And so uh, in turn, the Fed is, is launching this and does it then evolve into essentially a effectively a CBDC, so not blockchain based, but does this effectively become the, the you know, direct to Fed system uh, that ends up uh, tying in you know, wallets that that end users people are using to to directly interact with the Fed. I don't I don't know, but maybe that is the direction things are going. Um, to that end, we had to that end we had chair did go out for for comments on to the uh, in general uh, on a CBDC a year or so ago and I do expect we'll, we'll go out I don't I can't give you a date but we'll certainly go out and you know engage we we, we engage with the public on an ongoing basis yeah we are, we're also doing research on policy and also on technology that's what we're up to I'm aware of the the Boston Fed has a partnership there uh, the the uh, Hamilton project over there with the folks from MIT uh, media lab that doing a great job but you know it says here that the discussions would include uh technical experimentation i was just wondering at what level are you, are you talking about making decisions on architecture for a cbdc a retail CBDC? we're not we're not at the stage of making any real decisions what we're doing is experimenting in kind of early stage experimentation how would this work does it work what's the best technology what's the most efficient really at an early stage on but we're making progress on sort of technological issues the, the policy issues are equally important though you know we haven't decided that this is something that the financial system in the country want or need right so that's going to be very important right well i think i speak for the chairman as well uh would love to have more dialogue with the fed on on that and maybe bring in the folks from mit as well and just make sure that congress and this committee is as up to date as, uh, as others. Uh, let me switch over to uh, Fed now. There are some <clears throat> champions of uh, digital currency and stable coins in particular that uh, continue to cite the need for faster payment systems. However, as uh, was earlier mentioned, the Fed now is a service that the Fed is working on to finalize that will allow for instant payments between <clears throat> bank accounts. And the Fed has a target release date of for Fed now uh, between May and July which is right around the corner. Uh, do you see any reason why cryptocurrencies would provide faster payments than the FedNow system? Uh, and uh, would this offer, with the transparency of FedNow, would it offer uh, distinct advantages over some of these stable coins that are uh, touting uh, faster payments? What FedNow will do is it will enable all the banks, any bank in the United States, not just the big ones, to offer instant, you know, instantly available funds and real time payments to their customers. That's that's what it will do. So that's that's a great thing. You know, a CBDC, I think you're asking whether whether a CBDC would serve some of that. But a CD, CBDC is going to be years in the evaluation. And, you know, uh, I think we can get this into the hands of the public very quickly. And I think we'll have real time payments in this country very, very soon. And yeah. so that that's a good thing. It is, you know, I do have an overriding question, and that is, you know, before the greenback, uh, everybody had their own currency. You know, you had rail com rail companies, you had coal companies, you had, uh, you know, state banks that were authorized to issue their own currency. But but when the greenback came out, uh, all of those various cur currencies went to zero because everyone had, you know, because the greenback had the full faith and credit of the United States behind it. I'm worried about a lot of these uh, stable coins and, and other cryptocurrencies. Uh, 
do they go to zero when when we come up with a CBDC that has the full faith and credit of the United States behind it? That's and we've got thousands of these out there, and you've got people investing millions and millions of dollars in the well trillions right now. Uh, and I'm just I'm just thinking if we had those those advantages built into a uh, you know a CDBC, wouldn't those alternatives go to zero? If they did not have the transparency and the full faith and credit that, that we enjoy. So certainly unbacked cryptocurrencies that, that don't have any intrinsic value, but nonetheless trade for a positive number. Um, those, those have never understood the valuation of those. Stable coins are actually, many of them are really, they're, they're drawing on the credibility of the dollar. They have, they have dollar based they're, they're dollar denominated mainly and they right. have dollar based reserves, although we don't know what's in the reserves because there's no regulation. Gentlemen's right. time has expired. The Thank gentleman you. from Missouri, Mr. Lukemeyer, is recognized for five minutes. The Unbacked unback stable coins, bad, you know, that's the putting into the category of you know, that, that's or unbacked cryptos, bad cryptos that have, have no native value. Things like, uh, I guess, you know, he's uh, Bitcoin and, and, and Monero are bad. Um, CBDCs coming to the, to the rescue, replacing, uh, you know, uh, what we're currently seeing as, as the stable coins that the market is providing. Uh, and at the same time, we have the F Fed now system that nobody saw coming that's going to be in place with a matter of a matter of months that isn't isn't a CBDC, um, but is going to make make it a lot more efficient for the Fed to essentially interact interact with banks, sending money instantly. I don't know. I guess uh, I guess we could we could save this for, for the spaces. I don't really have I don't really know what to say at all. This is all moving very fast. Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, the you know you could see you could see the Congress itself doesn't really have a good handle on what on what's going on here. The Fed is just charging ahead now with its Fed Now system. CBDCs seems to be a, lo a long a long way out. Uh, Fed Now is being slipped through the door overnight. So we will see we will see what all the that all means perhaps one of the uh, most staunch, um, you know, uh, adversaries to to the implementation of a Fed CBDC central uh, central U.S. CBDC is Congressman Tom Emmer. He's been very vocal. He's been vocal, uh, uh, vocally opposed to the concept of the Fed. Uh, creating a CBDC, he doesn't think that you know. Essentially, the Fed should have the power to do so. He recently had some uh, interesting words to say about all this. Submitted online anonymously, and and then that's going to be the one question quota that I was given. Um, this is, a, 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 I find, I think I like this one. Here we go. Um, the Fed is clearly. I'm just reading this. Okay. <laughs> The Fed has clearly indicated that a decision to issue a CBDC would be a decision for Congress and that it has no intention of issuing a CBDC without authorization from Congress. Therefore, why do we need a bill to tell the Fed to do something to, to tell I'm sorry, to tell the Fed to not do something it was never planning on doing? Huh. It was never planning on doing. Whoever sent that in, I, I really appreciate it and I understand their logic but they are assuming that there are good actors in this space and that what they are hearing from these unelected bureaucrats who are saying there's nothing to see here. It's all good. We need to have uh, permission. It's interesting. The Federal Reserve issued uh, some uh, documents recently that my staff was provided. I uh, just showed up at one of their uh, events and they have a, uh, a, a slide, I would say, or a, in this deck where it lists what the Federal Reserve is responsible for. It's responsible for uh, the money supply. It's responsible for the two-tier uh, rails of the banking system, uh, the overnight window, those types of things that we're used to, right? You know what the bullet point was at the bottom? Central bank digital currency. They're putting it out in their own materials today, and they have no authority. They have not been directed by Congress to do a thing. 
let's understand that what they say is not necessarily what they're doing. You are dealing with central bankers around the world, which I am not opposed to the central banking system. But the idea, and I, I think these people literally looked at this uh, more than a decade ago and said, oh, look at those kids that are playing with this Satoshi white paper. And isn't that fun? It's kind of like a, it's kind of like gaming, right? Virtual gaming. It's virtual money. It's never going to go anywhere. And oops, then it started gaining some traction because people don't trust the way our money supply has been handled. They don't trust our monetary policies. They're worried about what our government is failing to do to ensure stability and a prosperous future. So what do they do? It starts to grow. And what do these bureaucrats do? They go, and by the way, bureaucrats with their partners in the private sector who are using the existing two-tier uh, banking system and want to protect it because that's their market share, they went, well, now we got to kill it. And so they started taking actions to try and knock this train off the tracks. And they found out much what the Chinese found out. By the way, uh, Chinese, you can't mind. They haven't been able to shut it all down. If they can't shut it down, nobody's going to shut it down. So they realized at some point, I can't, one, it's here and it's not going away. Two, I can't shut it down. So guess what I'm going to do now? I'm going to swallow it up and make it part of what we run because then we will control it. Uh, that's the innocent way of looking at it. The not so innocent way of looking at it is when people say to me, yeah, I know what you keep saying about the uh, digital yuan and how they use that to control the population. They turn your card on, they turn your card off. Uh, you have the outbreak in Wuhan. You can't pay for a hotel room. You can't buy transportation out of there. In fact, they will tell you when you can go to the grocery store because they'll turn on your, uh, your card. That will never happen here in the Western Hemisphere. Anybody familiar with Justin Trudeau and what he did to shut down the uh, protests up in Ottawa? He did exactly that. I, I, and again, I appreciate the question. I appreciate uh, that somebody is asking what is legitimate. You know, if Congress has the authority and they're, they're the only way that this can happen. Well, if you want to just assume people are going to do the things that you expect them to do, you do that at your own risk. I, I look at it this way. They are already moving in this direction. They already have friends of ours, people who believe in individual liberty and freedom, the right to self-determine, who think this is a good idea. It's, I, I just want to remind you uh, two different things. But in the early 1970s, they created something called FISA courts. These were special courts that were created by Congress for what? To surveil foreign nationals that might be up to no good on American soil. And you know what the argument was made back in the 70s? I wasn't there. I was a kid. I was actually having fun. The argument back then was made, it will never be used to spy on American citizens. I rest my case. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Enjoy it. All right. So Tom Emmer coming out strong. Um, he, I think he recently uh, issued a letter as well to, to that effect. Um, come staunchly against the issuance of CBDCs by the Fed. It's all shaping up to be quite the quite the battle. Uh, the Fed versus you know people like Tom Emmer who are sounding the alarm bells to what the potential of a CBDC might might mean in terms of uh, essentially taking taking away people's some some people's people's basic rights uh, and pointing to examples of uh, where we're already seeing it in, in China. Um, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know. Nobody knows where all this is going. I think what's, what's most interesting is we're basically seeing a competition over, you know, what the future of money is going to be. Right. So it's things like Bitcoin and Monero versus uh, CBDCs, which are being issued by the central banks, and then you have, you know, um, those that are looking out for citizens' rights, like Tom Emmer, that are, are that are fighting a against these uh, these uh, centralized issued uh, options versus allowing true open source protocols to be adopted. 
and there's obviously there's there's going to be there's going to be winners there's going to be losers i think the the end of the day there's there's going to be some combination of all right we're going to we're going to have cbdc's they're going to be here uh we know for sure that true crypto blockchain based crypto is not going away they're going to exist for sure what the uh, environment end result is going to look like in terms of uh which things are used the most and where the power really lies uh, it's it, nobody can determine at this point, uh, but obviously we're we're rooting for things like Bitcoin and Monero. Um, there's a I'm going to play this. We're going to end with uh, this last clip from from Tom Emmer on just the topic of not so much CBDCs, but he's concerned, you know, that as as part of this, as part of this trying to usher in CBDCs, that there is. There is a uh, an an active fight against true crypto that's taking place, um, and that there you know there is this this active uh, actions that are being taken essentially behind the scenes to cut off crypto and prevent it from growing. Um, what we've seen in the last week is, is if anything, is perhaps having the opposite effect. But I think it's it's an interesting theory. More importantly, uh, Neil, why is our government going after uh, the crypto uh, business? Uh, Signature, they, they initially announced that the, the issue was they were banking crypto and making loans. They weren't. They were just banking crypto. And even the uh, the New York Financial Services uh, Department, the head of that, has acknowledged crypto had nothing to do with Signature. Barney Frank, Barney Frank, the former chair of the House Financial Services Committee, has said uh, it appears that this is an attack on crypto. Uh, in fact, two sources have told Reuters that anybody who buys Signature has to agree they will not bank crypto. So it's really interesting, Neil. More questions to be uh, answered. If you look at the Fed, which just announced that this summer it's going to release or going to kick off its fed now program which is a payment system that would settle payments within seconds it's interesting is our government competing with the private sector right now and are these banks that are banking crypto uh, actually the target of uh, of their uh, their angst that's a fascinating you know laying out that theory right there right so the, the government is competing with the you know uh private industry crypto crypto naturally is blossoming out or organically uh but the government is is taking steps to try to put a cap on it and tom ever is on top of it so that that's exciting it's 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 promising to see that we have somebody like Tom Emmer out there, whether you agree with his other policies and things that he speaks of, at least he's, he's out there staunchly speaking out against um, the government's attempt to squash true crypto and not allowing to, to compete in the open market. So that is the end of the news for today. We have other stories, but for the purposes of keeping the show moving ahead, we're yeah. going to move on to the...